So as we find ourselves in this place where like nobody kind of knows what's going to happen next, everything is just so chaotic. Uh, one of the questions is, what are the churches that will be in decline five years from now doing right now? Okay, in other words, you know, you ever look back as a leader and you see uh, leaders make a decision and you're like, how, how, could you, how could you make that decision? And in hindsight, it seems really, really clear that that was a bad decision. Now, um, I promise you that every day we make decisions, some of which are going to lead us into progress in the future, some of which are going to lead us into decline. And right now, there are leaders who are making decisions that are going to lead them into decline five years from now. Now, Nobody really knows exactly what the future has in store, but the question I want to ask in this short video is, what are the decisions that leaders are making today that will lead them into decline? Because if you can isolate that, then you can probably avoid decline into the future and actually support your mission. So uh, these are the new characteristics of churches that will be in decline, I think, five years from now. And um, I hope this is going to help you and all of us make better decisions because Here's what's true, the decisions you make today impact the life you live tomorrow. And the decisions that you make today impact the organization or the church that you become in the future. So here's what I think leaders are doing right now that perhaps could lead them into decline five years from now. Number one, uh, I think a characteristic will be that in the midst of all this chaos, the leaders who are in decline five years from now will have bet everything on a physical return to church, okay? You see that happening right now. People are like, hey, we can reopen or we should reopen and the majority of churches have reopened. But here's the challenge. If you bet everything on a physical return to church, in other words, yes, everything's gonna go back to normal. Everybody's gonna come back. We're gonna fill up those rooms again. I'm not sure that's actually gonna lead you into progress in your mission moving forward. Um, Right now, the numbers that we're seeing is about the, the churches that have reopened have had about 36% of their previous attendance uh, return to church. And we're also seeing in some recent data from Barna that while 71% of boomers would love to see uh, church reopened and, and they want to go back to like physical services, only about 40 to 45% of all other generations are saying, hey, when we go back, it's gonna be primarily a physical experience. They want a hybrid church. So I'm gonna watch online this week, I'm, I'm out of town this week, uh, but I will be there next week. And uh, the other thing that I heard recently from a leader is that the frequency of attendance is not changing. In other words, as churches reopen, it's not like, yeah, we used to be there once a month, but now we're there all the time. So perhaps moving into the future, betting everything on a physical return to church might be a mistake. So number two, characteristic number two, success is still measured by the number of people who attend physical locations. So, you know, one of the things is our metrics in the church have been the same for, for decades now. It's like, what was the giving? What was the attendance, et cetera. And if those are your metrics, you're gonna do everything you possibly can to try to get people back in the room, even if you're fighting kind of a losing battle and not investing as much as you could be online. So if your metrics push you there, then you're gonna do everything you can to push your people back to church. And perhaps we'll be fighting um, gravity. And so, you know, the key for you in all of this is going to be very simple. You have to start to see online church as an opportunity, an opportunity to disciple people, to reach people, to minister to people, as well as in-person worship. It's not like in-person worship is going away. It's just going to change in the future. Okay, number three, number three. Online ministry uh, for churches that are going to be in decline is often seen as an afterthought or a lesser form. And maybe you've watched this video so far and you're like, yeah, 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 Carrie, but like online isn't real, okay? Those aren't real relationships. You can't do real discipleship on online. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's so new. Why would you write it off? And think about it, right? What are you doing? You're watching this video on your phone. You're watching this video on your laptop. That's what you're doing, right? So it's like if, if, if that is how you live, then you gotta figure out how to actually minister to people. And yes, online has all kinds of problems. And yes, the algorithm is a weird thing that I'm increasingly concerned about. But if that's where people are, that's where you need to bring the gospel. So if you're seeing online as an inferior form of ministry or connection, perhaps that will lead you into decline five years from now. Uh, number four, I think this is just true generally, but it's especially true of churches that'll be in decline. 
all the feedback you're getting comes from your echo chamber. So the good news about being online is you can talk to anybody anytime. The bad news is you can talk to anybody anytime. And the algorithm does this, but also your own choices do this. We are in a moment culturally where we only really listen to the people who agree with us. I think that's a mistake. All right, if I took you to my bookshelf, I can show you people with lots of different opinions on me, on faith and, and politics and all those things. And I'm, I'm reading, why? Because I wanna learn. I listen to podcasts from people I don't necessarily agree with, why? Because I wanna learn. But it's so easy to get in your echo chamber and you can get those five buddies around you who go, yeah, yeah, you know what? It's all about getting people back into the room. And then you know, you're in the middle of a sinking ship. So I would be careful to listen to voices that you disagree with and, and kind of be open. It's like, okay, what can I learn from that? In an online culture, and this is the weird part, run by algorithms, you don't actually get more choices, you get fewer. So you're gonna have to try to burst that bubble. Okay, and then finally, I think the fifth characteristic of churches that are gonna be in decline five years from now is they went back real quick to a format, format of three songs and a message. In other words, you know, here's our band, here's a sermon, away you go. I think this is an opportunity for us to get innovative. I think this is an opportunity for us not just to adapt, but to really think, okay, blank canvas, what can we do in bringing the gospel forward in the future? So uh, those are some things I think churches in the future are going to be doing. Uh, I've got some others. I got a version on my website. You can go to kerryneuhoff.com. Can't even say my own name, kerryneuhoff.com to learn more. I'm so excited to be with you uh, today and would love to hear from you in the comments. So. Um, what do you think? What, what do you think some churches are doing right now that are going to lead them into decline in the future? I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment, save this article, and maybe share it with a friend.